What's going on guys? I uh, back again. I have another stack of five records pulled out to show in this video and uh, <laughs> it's actually Friday evening now and I'm gonna try and have this uh, done tonight so I can put it up tomorrow morning which you know I, I tried doing this once a week thing before if you guys remember at like the end of 2016 uh, I kind of stopped doing that because it it does become a bit overbearing a week comes quickly so uh, you know it is a bit hard to keep up with and plus in the next few weeks there might be a couple of videos that are just completely missing for the week but there's a good reason for it because finally fucking finally uh maddie and i bought a house and i'm over the fucking moon because it's a really nice house in a really good location it's pretty big uh it's four bedrooms um which you know there's two of us and we share a room uh but you know i, I need a bedroom for all of this shit Maddie needs a room for uh, basically a, to serve as a, a second closet, uh, and we'll just have a, a guest bedroom for when any of the bays come over. Uh, Maddie can stay in there. Uh, anyway, I, I'm just I'm really excited about it. We close in like three weeks, and uh, I have not, you can see I've not even begun to uh, start packing yet. So it's gonna be a fucking it's gonna be a nightmare, but uh, we're gonna swing it. So. Only a couple more videos made in this place. Um, and I'll be honest, man, I'm fucking ready to be out of here. But if there's one thing I don't want, I don't want it to sound like I'm bitching and bragging. So let's get into it. This is what we got going in the background. Uh, I've already fucking talked through one of the three songs of it. Uh, this is Hyper Dawn Show with Abhorrence Veil. Uh, I want to get the seven inch of this as well because this is really, really fucking good, man. I've been really, really loving this project lately. All right, let's get into it. Uh, the first one here is uh, a band that I've kind of been talking about more and more recently uh, than I ever did in the past. And that's mainly because I, I kind of looked into a bunch of this band's records around the same time and I don't want to talk about like one band in every video so uh, I try and break it up as much as I can but uh, I do also want to get through everything that I haven't shown yet uh, so starting off uh, with Argo Slint with Incorrigible Bigotry this is the second of the three Argo Slint albums that exist this one came out in 2002 I think and this one definitely isn't a cakewalk to get your hands on because this one's only been pressed twice uh, once on Death to Mankind in 2002 and then Drakkar repressed it in 2016 and this one's actually quite nice i got this pretty recently through welton fiend uh which is kind of a pain in the ass to order through but once your shit goes out you get it pretty quickly uh and i think they might still have copies of this like i said it's a process but it's it's worth it so argos lint obviously uh we're, we're pretty familiar with argos lint uh because the name that this band has sort of created for itself comes pretty much strictly from the guitar work, which, you know, that's why I believe Grimble Isles Key is so popular. That's why I believe Argo Slint is so popular. And I think if it weren't for the themes of the songs, I feel like both of these bands would be huge. But whatever, man, these guys knew what they were doing. Uh, so this is fantastic. This is um, not my favorite Argo Slint. I think the first one is probably probably my favorite uh, and some of the demo stuff is is really fucking good as well uh, but one thing that Argo Slint does on every release without fail is they they really do create a perfect mixture of melody and aggression there's the front cover right there I think we've talked about this with um, uh, Arsenal of Glory I think it was um, this kind of has like that new world theme uh, again which, um, I don't know, it's, it's interesting for sure. It's something that not a lot of bands have really touched on. Um, and maybe it, because it is kind of a t touchy subject. There's the back there, very simple. You can tell this is really fucking glossy. Um, but it's actually, it's actually quite nice. Normally I don't like it, but I don't know, it works on this one. Uh, Mob of the Howling there is a bonus track. I think that song is only included on the LP versions of this album. Uh, I don't think the CDs, any of them, I don't think it ever included that. And the CDs also had an alternate cover as well, but I, I prefer this one. This has all the lyrics to all the songs on an inner sleeve. My favorite song on this one is Quelling the Simeon Surge. I just think it has a catchy chorus. 
um, and it is just uh, black vinyl with not much interesting on the label. Yeah, I don't think I need to sell Argo Slint to you guys, man. Either you know who Argo Slint is and you like the music, or you know who Argo Slint is and you avoid it because of your idea of what these lyrics are about, or you listen to Argo Slint and you just have the very wrong opinion that it's not any good. Uh, but I think that's the the very, very small minority. Anyway, man, shit's awesome. I love it to death, and I'm sure uh, most of you guys do too. So that's Argo Slint with Incorrigible Bigotry. <laughs> Moving on to a uh, Finnish project and one of my current favorites, we have this, um, Cielo and Viholinen with Sividesta. And I know that's not at all how you pronounce it, but I think that there's a worldwide consensus that um, Finnish is just kind of an impossible language to uh, pronounce unless you're Finnish. So, uh, whatever, man. This is a demo compilation that came out in 2014. Um, and this basically compiles the two demos that came before the first full-length album. Uh, there's a demo on here called Musta Uni, and a demo on here called Ruto Kieli. Uh, the first one came out in like 2012, and I think the second one came out in 2013, I think. Uh, what's cool about this is, uh, the, for demos, they sound really good. I mean, there's not much of a, a really noticeable production value difference between like these and the full length albums. But this is basically, you just hear the start of this band's career. And uh, I, for me, man, I really think that Cielo and Violin has shown that they get better with every release that they've done. And that goes all the way back to the demos because I like the second demo on here a bit more than I like the first one. And I like the first full length album more than these. And I like the second full length album more than everything else. Uh, so this band is just progressively getting better and better. But, that being said, even all the way as far back as the demos, this shit is fucking great. We were talking about riffs with Argos Land, and this is another band that pretty much has the riff mastered. Because this thing has like really catchy, fun riffs all over the fucking place, man. Uh, the vocals are great too, they're very like high energy and feral, and that's pretty much true throughout the entirety of Cielo and Villainance discography. Uh, but this is fucking great, man. So, uh, Hell Thrasher Productions put this out, which is a label I wasn't really familiar with uh, before this. But it's really cool, man. So, it's got the original cover that was on the CD, of course. That's the back right there. You got the band logo. And you got side Musta Uni and side Ruto Kieli. Uh, which is the name of each of the demos that this is a compilation of. And on the bottom here, I like this, uh, Anti-Islam Front Finland. And on that side, you have a little guy throwing the, like, Antifa flags into the garbage. And it's kind of weird. It actually includes, like, a um, actual jacket quality, like, inner sleeve thing that basically just the record and a normal inner sleeve came in. Uh, I'm not really sure why they did that, but, I mean, I guess it's a nice touch. Uh, the record itself is just black, which is limited to 200 copies. There was 100 on white, so obviously just a total of 300. Um, and that artwork right there looks very familiar to uh, that Catacombs of Blood uh, Drowning the Light record. And that's because it's the same guy who did the artwork for that uh, Maxime Tacardi, I guess is how his name is said. Um, I don't know, man. I'm not super into a lot of the stuff that he's done in terms of like album covers, but some of this stuff is really cool. Another thing this comes with is a like lyric sheet, but it, it folds out, which is cool. Uh, it just has all the lyrics and some additional artwork, uh, which that right there, of course, was on the label. And I like the sort of Mona Lisa thing, which is cool, but yeah, man, you got all the lyrics. This is another band that I, I really feel like everybody should just be on board with because of how fucking just good it is. Uh, this shit's hard to beat. I know this band's putting out another album this year, and I'm really, really curious to hear if they can outdo everything they've done so far. But, I mean, they've, they've set the bar pretty high, so I guess we'll see. Great, great shit, man. That's Cielo and Violin with Sividesta. Alright, here's 
one you guys have definitely heard of. This is Vargrov with Netherstorm. So this band kind of came out of nowhere and made pretty big waves with the release of this album. Vargrov is a, a one-man project, so I guess it formed in 2015, and this is the one and only release so far, which this is a full-length album, uh, but it's kind of like conflicting information on what year this came out in. Uh, I guess some people had copies of it uh, last year in 2017. If you look it up, Discogs has it listed as a 2017 release, while the Metal Archives has it listed as a 2018 release. I don't know the official release date. Uh, I don't know that I really care. So this shit is really, really good. And I think a lot of people have caught on to this because it really does have a In the Night Side Eclipse era emperor feel to it because you could call this symphonic black metal but this really does it right because it uses the like symphonic stuff very sensibly and it, it uses it pretty much solely as an atmosphere enhancer instead of being like a leading dynamic factor in the music which you know that's pretty much what emperor did early on uh the vocals are, are kind of reminiscent as well. I mean, they're pretty much just your standard wretched black metal vocals. Uh, but the symphonic stuff on here really, really is what makes this stand out. And uh, it kind of gives it like a very medieval feel in my opinion. Um, but I think that this might be the second press of this one. I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell uh, because there are a few different versions of this now. But uh, we'll figure it out. Uh, that's the front cover right there. I don't really like the front cover. I don't like how the logo is kind of like half superimposed like over the fucking album cover uh like the cover itself would be cool but i wish they kind of just had the logo like up here uh i don't know fucking minor gripe that's the back right there uh the picture of this guy is great man uh look at him bright eyed and bushy tailed ready to make some good emperor worship but you know kind of like a, with a lot of the stuff that werewolf records have been doing recently uh, the packaging is very, very simple. Uh, this doesn't come with anything, but you do get an additional 7-inch with it as well, which is quite cool. The 7-inch includes an Emperor cover of Ancient Queen, which was on the uh, Wrath of the Tyrant demo. And it looks like this. Um, it is purple vinyl, uh, as is the actual 12-inch record, which I guess I'll show you. Maybe the labels are cool or something. But the first press of this one, uh, the 7-inch, I think it was also purple, but it did come with like a separate individual like jacket. This one literally just comes like that. Uh, so I guess that's the main difference and the reason maybe you'd want the first press. Uh, but the actual 12 inch, the labels are super simple, but it is this purple color. But yeah, man, I don't know, really good shit. I'm kind of curious as to whether or not this is a 2018 uh, record. Maybe I'll find like the band camp or something and find like an, an official release date or something on this one. But yeah, really good stuff, man. If you guys like early, early Emperor stuff, then this is right up your alley. But again, you guys probably all heard this one. So that's Vargrov with Nether Storm. <laughs> God damn it, I'm ready to get this shit over with. All right, next up here is uh, something that was just put out earlier this year through Appalachian Noise Records. Strangely, I don't think I've seen anyone show this one, um, despite, you know, me personally, I was kind of excited to see it happen. And that is this, uh, Zaster with Nightmares at Dawn. This is a compilation that came out in 2012, I think. From what I can tell, this is the only compilation that's ever been released for Zaster. I'm not exactly as familiar with the Zaster discography uh, as I probably should be, but um, from what I understand about this, this was kind of like a proper send-off for Zaster, um, and that's kind of the way that Malefic saw this compilation. Um, but what's really cool about this is, I mean, this is obviously a compilation in the, in the sound quality because it varies so much from song to song. And not only does like the production quality vary from song to song, the songwriting itself is very different on some of these songs than others. I'll, I'll read you the beginning of what it says on the inside here. It says, this album is a collection of unreleased songs that were recorded and or written 2004 through 2009. These were songs I had forgotten about. 
Some were made by trying out other pieces of equipment, other were experimental and meant for split, demo, and other album releases I began working on but fell through. These are definitely not B-sides or throwaway tracks. It basically goes on and it says that there are some songs with clean singing, uh, some songs with like a death doom feel, guttural vocals. It even mentions a song on here that uh, turned into almost like a punk song. Uh, and it's true, man. You go through this. I couldn't tell you the names uh, offhand. I don't know this well enough to do that or anything. But listening through this, man, it really is kind of a, a retrospective look at the discography of Zaster, which I think is cool. And like I said, at the time, this was kind of Zaster's send-off. Um, but yeah, there's just a lot of information on the gatefold. I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, that's the front cover right there. Uh, which is kind of cool. I assume that's like a coffin or something. I don't know. There's the back cover right there. Really nice quality. Put out through Appalachian Noise Records. You have all of the song titles right here. And as you can see, this includes a, uh, a Black Sabbath cover. You might notice there are a couple songs on here that did end up on albums, but these are different versions of those songs. Nothing on here is, as far as I can tell, something that you can get on any other release. I don't know, again, I'm not that familiar with disaster stuff. That's the gateful right there. Uh, you can read this if you want, maybe pause and read it, because it is a sort of really interesting uh, thing to read sort of from the mind of Scott and what this release was and shit like that, uh, because I don't have the time to go into every detail. Uh, there were two versions of this, and they are double LP. Uh, there was two versions of this. One of them was black, and I don't remember the limitation for that one, uh, but the other one was uh, this sort of really nice, oh my god, it's gonna be hard to see, really nice, like, hazy brown color that looks a lot like that. Very fucking cool. And, uh, these were limited to 100 copies, and they came with a back patch, and the back patch, uh, I didn't get out, and honestly, offhand, I'm not really sure where it is. Uh, it might be in the flag box in my closet, but I'm not digging through it. But this it, this really is cool, man. It it shows pretty well how diverse Scott can be with his songwriting. Uh, and he's actually a really talented guy. According to the inside, a lot of people complain about the, the drums on this release, but I don't give a fuck. Uh, I don't really usually notice stuff like that. But really good stuff, man. I don't know if you can still get this. If you can, then you should get it because it's nice shit. That disaster with nightmares at dawn. All right, damn it. Let's finish this off with something I can get through pretty quickly. And this is kind of something that's like lesser known uh, compared to the other shit I've talked about in this video. This is Udzalu with the loins of repentance. So this is a black metal project band from Portland. Uh, and this does one of those things that every now and then you'll find a band that does it really well and it's really good. Uh, and that is sort of the punk black metal hybrid. Because throughout the entirety of this record, it, there are very punky sounding riffs. Um, which is kind of something that a lot of like NS black metal bands do. This has nothing to do with any of that as far as I can tell. But this sort of takes that idea and really expands upon it. And uh, I, think it's, I think it's a really nice mixture of styles. Um, the production on this is really good. I like the vocals, even though they're not super unique. Um, it is an interesting sort of combo with the music. There are times on this album where it does break into, like, actually blasting aggression. It's usually pretty unexpected, but it's a really, really cool record, man. This is the first album from this band that came out in 2017. Uh, they've been around for a few years now, but they've also put out an album this year, which I've yet to hear, and I think it's called Idiot Hell, but I don't know. I'll, I'll listen to it eventually. Uh, that's the front cover right there. It's real, real weird, uh, pretty much all the way around this thing. That's the back with all the song titles. He has some lyrics on an inner sheet, which is cool, and it is 250 copies on black vinyl and 250 copies on white vinyl. Um, yeah, man. This is super fucking cool, and you can get this for really, really cheap. If you look on Discogs, there's one up for sale now for like 10 bucks. Um, it's definitely worth that if you're into the sort of punky black metal stuff, which I am. A lot of times it's not done very good, but when it is, I like it a lot, and this does it really well. So if you're curious, that's Utsulu with The Loins of Repetence. That's it guys, I'm kind of losing my daylight here, so I'm gonna wrap this up and uh, 
we'll do this again before too long i'm sure uh like i said there might be a video missing next week in fact there almost certainly will be uh and the week after that hopefully we'll be back on track and hopefully i'll have made a dent in all this fucking packing that i have to do so uh I don't know, we'll see what happens, um, but hope you guys enjoyed this one and we'll talk soon. Later. Yeah.